Yes, a very good morning to you and uh, welcome to this edition of the program. Good morning, Anna. It's time for us to uh, get into our discussion segment. And this morning, uh, we will be looking at the topic uh, that has to do with um, uplifting the dignity of labor. Well, you're going to agree with me that yesterday, May 1st, world over, uh, mad workers generally all over the world max the workers day that's the international labor day and of course a lot of concerns and uh, reactions you know took place yesterday uh, in the country a lot of people you know um, uh, said that a lot of struggles were still going on with the nigerian workers uh, what are the things you know we need to change what are the things we need to start doing uh, to uh, make the workers happy to create a good working environment and of course to also um, make the workers understand uh, that there is dignity in labor. Well, this morning we'll be looking uh, critically what does it really mean to uphold, uplift uh, the dignity uh, of labor. Well, this morning we have a guest in the house who is going to be um, telling us all about that and, of course, uh, getting deeply into uh, what the May Day celebration is all about, the Workers' Day celebration is all about, and, uh, of course, how they celebrated yesterday and, of course, what's the way forward. Uh, this morning, uh, it's good to have with me on the show uh, Mr. Chikwelo Adigwe. He is the state uh, president of Nauge. Good to have you on the show. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Anambra. Yes. Um, let's get uh, started. Yesterday it was May 1st, Workers Day International Labor Day, and it uh, was celebrated world over. And I also know that Anambra State celebrated specially uh, at the Alex Equipment Square um, or Car Quickly. Let's, let's get to know what really happened yesterday. W what's yesterday all about? The Workers Day celebration, the International Labor Day celebration, what is it all about? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the origin of Workers' Day can be traced to back then in America in 1886 mm. uh, during like eight hour strike in Hemisphere. Mm. So from that day, we started marking the May Day celebration every 1st of May, which we called Workers' Day celebration. So and it's been celebrated all over the world. It's been celebrated. It's just an occasion where workers are celebrated, where workers can they, they normally come together to rejoice, we are, we, we are they come together to make their needs known to the government mm. and uh, a lot of it and other things. As at yesterday, the whole of the workers in Anambra State gathered yesterday at the Pueme Square, which I was there present. And uh, His Excellency, the number one uh, citizen of Anambra State was there, mm -hmm. who is the number one worker also. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, all the labor leaders, the commissioners, the, his cabinet members, we were there. So, and we celebrated it. The workers gathered, they turned out their mass to celebrate our day, and uh, we make a lot of demands from His Excellency. And he himself, coming from the background, uh, whose parents were teachers. So, and uh, he's one of us also, because you know that as a professor mm -hmm. that is in class, he was telling us that even on their own path, that they are still on strike. They asked you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know that as a professor, that he was a teacher. Mm -hmm before he assumed the position of uh, being the number one worker of Anambra State. Mm. So, so he, was, he was speaking to us as part of us. It was not uh, as it normally used to be before, mm. because it's more of an interaction, mm. more of a discussion. Mm. It's more of a heart-to-heart -heart discussion, because mm. when he was speaking to the workers of Anambra State yesterday, you will see that relationship, you, see, you will see that synergy. You will see that hard to hard discussion. He's not telling us, I'll do this, I'll do that. He's just trying to make us to understand that this day belongs to all of us. That body workers, the employers and the employees will, will come together to make this, this particular state profitable. That whatever that comes to the table, anything that can be implemented will be done. So tell us all about yesterday and it was a very uh, memorial day. Even the head of service was there also present. So it was very memorial for the workers and the workers were very happy. For the first time, the governor was engaging them in a discussion, not replying to their, uh, to their demands. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, uplifting <coughs> dignity of labor or in labor. Uh, what does it really mean? Let's, let's, let's get down to you. You are the state president or chairman of Nauge. Um, what does dignity in labor, what does it mean? Uh, okay, dignity is all about trying to uh, maximize the honor, mm. to honor the workers. And the way we're talking about uplifting their dignity is just, just trying to fashion a way to, to make the people, the workers, 
to be more, to, to, to appreciate them. Let me use that word, appreciate. To appreciate whatever they have been doing, they have been contributing to the society. And when I'm talking about this, you know that the, the, the workers are the people that drive the economy mm. of every nation. Mm. Because when there is no worker, there is no nation. That's why both the political office holders, both the, the civil servant, the public servant, they are all workers but belong to different categories. And the, everything they are doing is to impact the society and to drive the economy and make the, the state to be profitable. Mm. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk about why it is important, you know, to uplift the dignity of labor. Because it looks as if um, in some part of the country, Nigeria, a lot of people have resorted to um, begging. Now, you see a lot of people who are healthy, you know. You either see them at bus stops, you see them at one corners of the road, and you know they they have this belief or this mindset that the only way they can make it is when they try to extort people or when they try to beg their way out of all of this. Let's talk about the importance of dignity in labor because a lot of people don't understand what it means to go and work and earn money and take care of yourself. Uh, one of the things I want to say about that, like for example in India, those people that are begging for arms, if you give them money. Yeah, you are just risking your life because the, the people believe that when you give them money, you are encouraging them to continue begging. Okay. Now let me say something very important. Uh, in a country like this, I believe when His Excellency was speaking to us yesterday, Mr. Governor, he was speaking specifically on parks and market. Mm. He says that he's trying to make sure they are trying to create a process where a KK driver when he pays the money he's supposed to pay to government coffers and has something like a card, he can walk into a park, load his vehicle, and move away. To any park? I heard that yesterday. Without even being extorted. Okay. So now, this is all about reshaping our mindset, mm. trying to make us to understand that we need to move away from where we are to another place where we are going. Mm. Because in a situation, because in Nigeria today, people believe that the easiest way to get money is begging of arms. Mm. The other day I saw one grown up man in Enugu was, you know, I told him, can't you go and work and feed this woman? Mm. And immediately he left her vehicle. So you see that they have turned it into a business venture. And okay, for example, in Anocha Lukumen, we are working as a staff. There's a blind, there's a disabled man, there is a blind man. But he doesn't beg. He engages himself into it wiser. Mm. And one of the things that, that anytime he comes with those brooms, whether you need it or not, you must buy it in order to encourage him. Yes. So I believe that the first of foremost is that it's just reshaping the mindset of we, the Nigerians. How do we go about doing that? Because that's my next question. How do we protect the dignity in labor? How do we protect it? How do we go about, you know, changing the mindset? Because this I'm telling you now, I've experienced that I was in Lagos a few weeks ago. And the morning I traveled to Lagos, I met the young boy, a young healthy boy. And, you know, dressed so fine. Now, I know there are issues and situations where, you know, some things happen and you just need money or you need help to get you to one place or the other. I'm not disputing that. But when it becomes a norm, you know, amongst our young people, we ask the question, where are we headed? So you talked about the mindset. How do we go about this, you know, to tell the people and let them know that, see, there is dignity in labor. Okay, one of, one of the things I want to say is that uh, we need to start what we call constructive engagement okay. and training. Mm. When you have constructive engagement where you bring people together, you teach them, and after teaching them, you engage them. Mm. That is the number one place. And secondly is this, the government, the, our, 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 uh, the government should be able to be, to be encouraging people that engage in little, little craft, not extorting tax from them. Mm. Because for example now, you see a young man that finished in universities, there's no work, he will engage in one craft or the other, trying to earn a living, struggling. Mm. So I believe that the government should encourage such a uh, venture by giving them all this uh, uh, soft loan, like that one of Anambra Asma and so on and so forth. You know that government might design that process, that we, we, we have brought out this money for the, for, for the lesser people in the society. Mm. But the problem is, the process of that money getting into the right hand mm. 
Do you understand it now? Mm -hmm. So now, if those things are there, you will see that the people begin to see that there's a dignity in level. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you start something, the government are there to give you aid. Okay. The government are there to support you. Okay. But today you'll notice that if you start something, you are just starting to be to do one or one thing or the other. Like my friend that came back from uh, Canada, something is doing. He can plant tomato, anything that is not rich crops, uh, crops. He can plant it inside bucket of water. Mm. So that is creativity. That's technology mm. for you. Mm. And the, such people are people that government will encourage. They, they have mm. to absorb them into the system. Mm. They have to bring them to, uh, uh, closer. Mm. Because now, now everybody's moving in agriculture. And we don't have enough land to farm. Mm. So he told me that just a bucket of water, mm. uh, he will just plant tomatoes and everything. The thing will, 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 will germinate, mm. even without sand. Mm. So you see, but these are people that government need to encourage. But you notice that when somebody like that starts such business, instead of encouraging them, mm. we'll be extorting them with tax, we'll be extorting them with it and so on. That is another level of discouragement. There's no degree of level. And secondly, is this. We need to be more serious and more focused with our academic section. Okay. Because one, you notice that the social evil that dominated the youth are traceable to the last uh, ASU strike that led us to NSAS and so on and so forth. So students were out of school and with what, they, with what did they do to do? They engaged themselves. Mm. And uh, it was from that place we started hearing a lot of things, uh, Yahoo Plus, Okita and so on, a lot of evil begin to emanate. Mm. So you know that, and the second is this, when somebody is in school, because my uncle told me then that when he was in school, uh, uh, that the government provides, that even, even, even as a student, you'll be working. Uh, even as a student in school, uh, uh, the, the companies will be sending in uh, 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 adverts mm. for work. Mm. But today, you see that the companies are drilling. Mm. We are now supporting nude. We are not supporting things that are not important to society. So people are no longer interested to work. They are interested to go and make that fame mm. by all means. Mm. So, 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 so coming to that dignity of labor, there are things that the people will do. And there are things that government will do. All right. Let, 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 me, let, let me come down to um, your office as the state president to chairman of NOGE, uh, um, the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees. That's what it means, uh, NOGE. Uh, talking about dignity in labor, there is this general belief or there's this belief amongst Nigerians that government workers don't understand what it means when we say dignity in labor. For instance, that if you go to most government offices, a lot of people don't come to work. A lot of people don't even care about the work. A lot of people don't even, they're not bothered if the work is going or not. What they're bothered is at the end of the month, let there be salary. In your office, in your organization, in your ministry, how have you been able to um, um, change it? Because you just talked about mindset. How have you been able to create that mindset among your workers that stays dignity in labor? You know, first and foremost, you know that uh, before there is anything, there is a cost to it. Okay. We are talking about people not coming to work. Like in my own system, in the local government system, I remember that time, some years back, when a governor was in this state. He was busy hijacking our works, taking away our duties and shadows. And we met him at that particular time. He told us, if you don't see what you, you need to do, you don't have to do it. So that is a very big discouragement mm. to the workforce. Okay, now today is uh, the, the, the issue with the civil, let me use my sector as an example, because you listened to His Excellency yesterday, when he was talking about the local government, he was talking about the reform, he was talking about restoration, mm. he was talking about election and so on. These mm. are the things that give the people the confidence and makes them to understand that there's dignity in level. Mm. But in a situation where all our jobs have been taken away, they've been contracted out because of the monetary aspect of the okay, like yesterday, when I was coming to the Queen Square, I saw a, a shuttle mm. that was carrying a pork meat. It mm. was exposed. You know that when the system was still okay, okay, that kind of exposure of meat that people would eat, there's people we call environmental and local government, they would just seize that vehicle and pass it to the meat. Mm. But today, the, the government has taken over everything and they are more interested in the money than the office. That's why if you go to a lot of government offices, there is no office uh, 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 there, there, there's nothing, there's nothing that women encourage you as a worker to be coming to work. Even when you come, there, so much money of the office doesn't even have, they don't have lights. No lights, no religious surprise. So you see that, first and foremost, the environment must be attractive. That's why 
when you go to the banking sector, mm. first of all, their offices are conducive. Mm. The fridge are there and everything is there. So, and you will see them, and, 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 and even, even as they are doing their job, they, they are becoming more profitable, even the way they dress and the way they present themselves. Mm. And even they are taking me something to write home about. It's not all about money, 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 money. I was telling uh, the press yesterday, I told them that making our offices comfortable adds to productivity mm. of a worker. Mm. In a situation where you come to office and there's nothing you will do for the whole of the day, and the job you are supposed to do as a professional, something that took you to school to stay for five, six years and get your certificate, you can't even do any single one of them. So I believe that these are the pictures. And even on our own aspect, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the area we have gone to restore the, uh, the, the, the attention of people, even the workers, is we keep a uh, constant engagement with the government. These are the right things to do. Hmm. Even I thank God for our commissioner, uh, who is the local government chairman, he's doing well. He, he, I think he's a, uh, he, he, he has been the first of his kind mm. for a commission to be appointed and he was going to tour, meeting the workers direct. And people were so excited about that. Mm. So these are the things that we call governance and these are the things that will restore the dignity of level among the civil servants in Anambra states. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, this is Good Morning Anambra. And of course, uh, in commemoration of uh, the uh, International Labor Day, uh, celebrating Workers' Day, uh, we are actually discussing the topic uplifting the dignity of labor. Well, you'll agree with me that um, it's important that one works and uh, one also finds that uh, the work he or she is doing, there is dignity in it. But then again, we're looking holistically in Nigeria or Nigerian workers. Uh, do they really, you know, have that feeling? that there is dignity in the work they do. Uh, we've been talking about it, and of course, Comrade Adigwe, uh, the state president of Norge is here, and he's been, you know, throwing more lights on that. If you want to join the discussion this morning, you are so free. Uh, the numbers is there on your screen. Uh, you can call the number, and of course, if there are questions you need to ask, we'll be here to, you know, um, get that sorted out. If there are contributions you need to make, we'll also be here uh, to hear what you have to say as regarding that. Back to you, um, um, Comrade Adigwe. Uh, still talking about uplifting the dignity of labor. The Nigerian workers, let's look at it holistically. Do they have that belief that there is dignity in labor? I asked that question because there was something you said about our youths. The strike issue, ASU and its whole trouble, the youths, you know, getting themselves engaged in social vices that has not been, you know, uh, um, 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 helpful to anybody. I, 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 I was talking to someone one day and he told me um, that uh, a younger boy once told his uncle that uncle, life no hard. Now you, we will just won't live long. You know, he said that statement to the uncle and the uncle was asking, what do you mean by life no hard? Now me won't live long. He said, uncle, yes, now life no hard. Now you won't live long. You won't they do things the right way. You won't they do things in the good way. Where have our youths lost it? Because right now, when we talk about um, that spirit of get rich quick syndrome, it's also one of the reasons why a lot of youths and a lot of people don't believe that there is dignity in labor. Where do we go from here? Uh, one thing I want to tell you is that uh, with the situation we find ourselves in Nigeria, uh, people don't no longer have confidence in labor. Because, okay, I was discussing with somebody that I told him that uh, your child you sent to school you sent him to school and you are giving him pocket money. Small time, that child will return with vehicle, bring a lot of money, building houses for you and so on, and you won't ask the child where you did you get the money from. So you see that people have begun to see that, they, they, that, that, that there's no dignity there's in labor because of the way workers have been treated. Mm. Second lesson is you will spend your money in school and you will pass through a lot of level of education to become a professor. And I myself, I may not even attend any academic qualification, but because I know one godfather or the other, I'll be appointed a chairman or appointed a councillor, appointed whatever. Mm. And uh, you will see yourself as a professor. Uh, I'll be any bigger mm. than you. Mm. So where is the confidence? Where is the hope? Mm. So you see that that's why people will look, it at, uh, look at it like there's no need of spending time in school after spending time in school, I'll come out and be carrying five from one office to the other. And if eventually I get one employment or the other, I'll be, I will receive 40,000 naira at the end of the year. That's if it's up to. That's if it's up to, because it's, it's nothing. And then even as Saturday, Nigerian workers were living from hand to mouth. 
Okay, now for example, in part of status and establishment, it's supposed to be like, like in ABS for example, we have MD and CEO. Mm. The civil servants that we employ should be allowed to be head in the, the ABS. Mm. But you will see that whenever there's an appointment, they will bring in somebody else from nowhere. Mm. To, so you see that the people that are working, they are struggling to, to, to even show the world what they have. Mm. There's no hope for them. Mm. Because they always know that whenever that pos they, they, they're supposed to climb to that position, somebody will be appointed to be there. Mm. And that is wrong. So I believe at this juncture, in order to dignify our labor to uplift it, mm. the government should look into appointing civil servants to be heading ministries, parastatals and agencies, even boards. All right. Uh, we'll come back to that because that's actually a very big issue which, um, uh, you know, has been on for a very long time and, you know, we don't know reason why it's like that. Uh, but stay with us because we want to go to the street now to hear from people uh, what they believe and feel about uplifting dignity in labor. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Workers are at the heart, at the core of government building or development so workers can contribute in so many ways. If they are dedicated to their service, that service alone at their respective offices is enough to boost government development. And that dedication is owing that work as if it is your own. Do it as if you are doing it unto God. Do it as if it is your own, uh, your own quota you are contributing to the community. If you work that way, uh, then I be, you, you bring out the best in you, you contribute the best in you. And when governments appreciate them, workers will be very happy. When workers receive their salary, they will happy and work. And when they see that it's a government that has their interests at heart, pay them as at when do those that are retire, uh, uh, on retirement, also pay them their retirement uh, benefits, then they, everybody will be happy. There are cases where people who are supposed to be doing their job are not necessarily found in their place of work. So punctuality to work uh, is one of the factors that will contribute to the development. Secondly, supporting the government in what they are doing, uh, in all the activities, contributing their own quota, and to see that everything works out well. Uh, you know, you can imagine, uh, even in this harsh economy, they strive with their salaries to do a lot of works, both to home and the society. But there is more to it. Even though what I'm being paid is little, but let that passion, that service be there. What can I do? So what they should give is what, what they should give, not only what they will expect. So that at the end of the day, we can grow uh, the nation with the mindset of giving back instead of taking. Um, as a worker, we all have our various roles to play in our establishments or wherever uh, we work. Um, but mostly, manpower really matters in where we work. So we need, we need to put in our best because as a worker, as an, employ, as an employee, if I don't... Um, if I don't have a good output of my job, then that means I'm not helping my company, I'm not helping my employer. I'm glad to have you back. Uh, still good morning, Anambra. And we're just back from the streets. A lot of people had their own uh, opinions on what it means to, you know, uplift the dignity in labor. And we still have in the house Com Comrade Adigwe, who is the state uh, uh, chairman, president of Nolge. Uh, you, you had a lot of people, you know, um, say one or two stuffs about um, being dedicated to duty and, you know, believing in dignity of labor. Quickly, I want you to highlight some of the challenges, some of the problems, you know, associated with why a lot of people just feel like, see, I don't believe there's dignity in labor. 
in this part of the world? Because uh, why use this part of the world? As a lot of people want to leave the country. A lot of people want to run away from Nigeria because they feel like if I go to Europe, I would understand what it means that by when someone says there's dignity in labor, you get to work, you get to see the reason why you're working. So I want you to highlight some of the problems and challenges why we don't, you know, a lot of people don't believe in dignity and labor in this part of the world. Uh, so uh, I want to say something in that aspect because it's very simple and very quite clear. One is the, uh, the working environment. Mm. That's the number one thing. The working environment is so poor and uh, it's taken for granted. Mm. Like as I said before, some offices doesn't have light. Even in some office of head of, uh, heads of department, when you walked in there, you'd be ashamed of yourself. Mm. There are, uh, uh, there are a lot of things like stationaries and so on. They'll be telling you there's no money and so on. Okay, now when we come to, another aspect of it is this. The take home. The take home is nothing to write home about. Uh, you and I, you'll notice that even you as a civil servant, as a civil servant, if we are relying on our salaries, it takes us nowhere. Mm. As it stands today, 80% of civil servants in Anambra State and most states of the South is, let me speak on the, my area, even local government now, they're on loan. Mm. Because what they are being received every month is not enough. Mm. Check the transportation and so on and so forth. Mm. The housing scheme and so on and so forth. They are not there because I remember then in Enugu, in old Anambra states, most of our people that have houses in Enugu, they got it through service service system. Mm. But those things are no longer there. As you're working, the government will take in your money. In no distant time, the house become yours. Mm. But today, the housing scheme is no longer there. Mm. The transportation system is no longer there. Mm. The roads are bad, no train, nothing, nothing, and so on and so forth. Mm. And, the, and, the, and even if inflation is a contributing aspect of, of it also. Mm. So you see that those are the things that makes people believe there is no need. There's no, there's no need to be of leading, to be doing anything. Mm. Because, because of those things are discouragement. Mm. Okay, for example, today in Anambra State, if you're a civil servant and you struggle to get a vehicle or a car that's taking you around, before you go, okay, as it stands today, if you, before you move around, before one week or the other, that car will be in bad shape because of bad roads. Mm. So those are the things we need to look into. Those are things we need to do. And second, okay, like for example, in Ghana, they have a commission in charge of salary and wages review, like we have in Nigeria. Okay. They don't wait for workers to go on strike. They don't wait for people to push. Every five years, there must be a review mm. and implementation as well. Mm. Because as day goes by, things are going up. That's why you see our people, we are leaving the system and we embrace neither traveling abroad or even moving into the mainstream line of politics. Mm. And I believe that what will help the, 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 uh, the, 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 working, um, the, the working sector of the Nigerian workers is to be more attractive is making political office to be a part-time. Mm. When you make it to be a part-time job, you see that the other side will receive more life. Mm. But today you see a doctor abandoning his hospital, mm. running into politics, a lawyer abandoning his law profession, running into politics, and a lot of them. Because they believe that whatever I'm getting here doesn't qualify, uh, 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 it doesn't qualify the effort they are putting in. So they need to go where they will carry it in Ghana must go. Mm. And even as a civil servant at times, uh, you find it difficult. Most of the families, even after retirement, I thank God His Excellency, Mr. Governor, said that under his watch, people will receive their gratuity. Mm. Even after putting in a whole 35 years of service, that gratuity, people are, you know that most of us, we are waiting for that gratuity in order for us to invest and make, and make out something tangible. Mm. Yet, when you, when you uh, immediately you retire, they won't even give you that gratuity. Like in my local government now, in my sector, we are being owed about uh, 40 point something billion, over 40 point something billion naira. It's been 17 till date. So when you look at those things and so on, it's discouraging. Mm. It makes the workers not to believe in the system. And it makes the younger generation to see this thing that is not something that we can do.
All right, uh, the numbers are still there on your screen. We just have some few minutes to round off the program. If there are contributions you need to, you know, uh, make uh, as regarding our topic of discussion, uplifting dignity of labor, I will be here to, you know, hear all of those contributions. There are questions you need to ask the state uh, president of Norge. He's also here and he uh, will be able to answer all of those questions. Uh, call the numbers on your screen and, of course, we'll take your call quickly. You just highlighted some of the challenges um, been developing the country in terms of a lot of people um, believing that there is dignity in labor. And now the next question is, what are ways that we can actually increase dignity in labor in our society? What are the things we need to start doing? For instance, um, in the UK, because I, why, why I use the UK so much is um, I, had some, I have some friends there, you know, and, you know, they keep saying wanted. You see somebody who is in the UK leaving the best of life and you probably feel like they have the whole money in the world no it's because the the, the system has been designed okay. in a way that even when you don't have the money to purchase things the basic things you need you can be given as long as you're doing or you know you have a good job you know they pick it from your salary you just said something like that in the older number of state as regarding housing what are other ways we can you know make people understand the people in this part of the world nigerians nigerian workers understand that there's dignity in labor uh, you know that uh, you mentioned something about UK. Let me go there first before I come back to Nigeria. You know that uh, when our people leave this country and travel outside Nigeria, mm. you see some of them working 12 hours, 8 hours, mm. 10 hours to mm. make ends meet because they are being paid per hour. Okay. Not by wasting the whole of your time and at the end of the month, we'll just bring in a figure, complete it together and give you to go home. Mm. So now, uh, there are many ways we can make these things to work. Mm. One is this, making our academic uh, section more attractive to the younger generation. Mm. Today, somebody will move into uh, BB Niger House and 190 million. Somebody will do pawn something and 100 million. But you'll see somebody that will go to mathematics competition. When he come out, they're giving 10,000. The best graduating student in UNESCO is no longer being celebrated. But you see a car company will package a car and go and give out to people that stayed in a house for three months without no concept, nothing, nothing, and they call it that they're modeling for the youth. But you see that the best graduating uh, student in university or in department cannot even receive a car or even an appointment from any department or even from any agency. Mm. So those are the things we need to put in place. Because when you put in place, because everything, any process you are into, you are looking at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And whether any time there's a carrot at the end of the tunnel, mm. you have the confidence to push further. Mm. But in a situation where it's like the situation of Nigerian workers in this part of the world is that we don't know where we are going. We are like people walking in a, in a darkness. Mm. Because every day we are saying, okay, now for example, we are talking about 18,000 minimum wage, not yet fully implemented. Talking about 30,000 minimum wage, not yet fully implemented. Today, the fuel has skyrocketed. Even the electric tariff, they have put money there, mm. and so on and so forth. And we are still taking home that mega salary. Mm. That is, uh, it's like people are seeing uh, engaging themselves in public service like moving into poverty. So I believe that if the government, there are some issues, there are things I've highlighted already, mm. that when they bring it back, it will restore hope. It will make people to know there's dignity in level. But in a situation where those things are not brought back, see, as of today, there is a normal belief, general norm, that, that, uh, uh, that public uh, service is not a, a job for young people especially mm. the, the young men. Mm. We, are, we are looking at it as a, as a job for older women and so on and so mm. forth. But I know the time I started work, back then in 2002, 2001, mm. it was much attractive. Mm. It was from that I, I, I trained myself in school. But as the days come by, instead of improving things, we are, we are even decreasing mm. and even decaying the more. Mm. Because one is this, instead of making that aspect profitable, we engage more in political appointment, thereby rubbishing the system. Mm. Okay, now for example, when in the past dispensation we have a lot of SSAs and EAs, and none of them goes home with nothing less than 150 to 100,000 every month. Mm. But you see a civil servant that has put in his or her, uh, 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 or her time of more, of, more than, of more than 10, 5 years, mm. and the person's salary will not be up to 100,000. Mm. So in that aspect, what are you trying to tell us? You are trying to tell us that this system is not working. You, uh, you are trying to tell us to jump the ship. Mm. And that's why that whenever people come to the office, there will be no 
as in that motivation will not be there. Work. That motivation will not be there. Even the, the this compound of ABS, since I was born, I don't think outside this structure and the few things they put here, there's not much improvement. Mm. This place is supposed to have staff quarters. Mm. So we have a lot of things to make people that are working here comfortable because at times I know that you you guys work night shifts mm. as soon as possible. So you're now in a situation where you have your house here, you have your car and everything, the water is here running, and you have your apartment, you are mm. living here, you see that you will improve. The you will see that. Belonging, yeah. So, so you, you have the sense of belonging that you are a stakeholder in what you're doing. Mm. It's not where that everywhere will be bushy and so on and so forth. Even if you want to do one, it become white, elephant project and so on and so forth. Though mm. there's nothing like, and, you, and, and, and I must be sincere with you, that most of your workers here, they will be here just for temporary reason. They are looking for an opportunity to move out. Mm. So I'm going to ask you this question, because the problems, the challenges you've highlighted, and some of the solutions you've also, you know, said, do you see us getting to that point where those things you said, if they are being brought back, then there could be a brighter future. Do you see us getting to that point? Uh, I must with say the way, with the situations of things right now. I must say something that uh, is just a 50-50 something. One is giving people appointments. Secondly, is allowing them to work. That's why I was saying, like, allowing the people from the system to be heading the, the agency or personal or ministry. Mm. Like, for example, now, if that's, uh, let me, I will be using ABS for example, because we are here. If that has the staff yeah. in ABS, you grew up from the system. Yeah, from the you, you know the challenges of the people, yeah. like this thousand and so on. Yeah. And you walk through the rank and file and became the MD of CEO. Mm. And you have free hand to work you begin to implement those things. Mm. You begin to build staff quarters. Because you are trying to modernize the system that made you. Because you understand that. Yes, you understand the system. And secondly this, I must say something, secondly is this, no matter how corrupt a civil servant is, mm. there is an atom of fear in him. Okay. No matter how corrupt a civil servant is, there are things he or she cannot do because he knows that his integrity is at stake, mm. the system is at stake, mm. and even his stake or maybe or whatever is at stake. Mm. So I believe that the only thing that will make us to make a headway is when we begin to use people that are locals. I'm talking about the staff. Mm. That's why when Mr. Governor was saying something, he was saying that going to China to buy clothes, we are empowering the workers there. Mm. The same thing like importing somebody to head a ministry where people has grown from rank and file from clerical officers and so on and so on and come to top end challenge in order to head because when you're if you're example if you are heading the ABS now, mm. nobody will tell you what to do. You know the problem and the challenges. True. And when the money comes in, you will know how to implement it. True. Even as that now, this ABS is supposed to have uh, uh, they have to open roads, start everywhere, and so on and so forth. You have your uh, 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 the uh, event center also. Can you imagine that if this place have events that I don't you know the kind of money you'll be generating? Mm. All this kind of tent. Because we have enough parking space here and you have staff quarters and so on and so forth. Even in some, some establishment like this, when we have, if we are sincere enough, depending on the, the area of land, we can even have our school here for our children. Mm. So even if as a staff you have your child going to the school mm. that belongs to your establishment, mm. it saves you some certain level of cost. Mm. So with those things in place allow people to call work freely will be heading there. But in a situation where we are doing the other thing and saying the other thing at the same time, we are not going All right, quickly, as we round off, what would be your um, parting words to um, the Nigerian workers, to the youths, to people who um, don't see or don't believe that there is dignity in labor? I want to say that I want to, first of all, wish the Nigerian workers well. I want to implore them to keep working. We will not give up. Mm -hmm. We will get it right one day. Mm -hmm. And I want to also encourage them that as the election is coming around the corner, pick up your PVC. Let's go to the pool and get the right person because like when Mr. Governor was saying yesterday, he told us that he cannot say what he cannot do, mm -hmm. but he says what he will do. Mm -hmm. He said that he doesn't know how to paint words. We are praying that we are going to, Nigerian workers will begin to elect such leaders mm. that wants to correct the system, mm. to take it away from where it was mm. to where we are going. And I believe that with all these things, we are going somewhere. And I believe as workers on Ambra say, we should not give up. The young generation should come up because we can't allow the system to die. I know that one day, one day it shall be well with us.
Thank you. One day, Chamber One with us. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, you actually had it from uh, the state uh, president of Nolge uh, himself. Well, he's actually said that um, let's keep keeping on regardless of what is going on. Uh, let's also believe that there's dignity in labor. Go out there, do your job, do it to the very best of your knowledge, and uh, remember that a lot of people are watching. And of course, there is dignity in labor. So if you are one of those people who don't believe that there's dignity in labor from today, I begin to have that sense of belonging, begin to have that mindset that it is important that you do what is right. It is important that you do it when you ought to do it. And it's very important that you take your job seriously because there is dignity in labor. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on the show, Mr. Chikwelu Adigwe, the state president of Nogi so much. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. you very much. Thank you. So All right, much. this is exactly where we're drawing the curtains on today's edition of the program. Good morning, Anambra. Tomorrow, we will be here again to bring to you the best of it all on television. I'm a Barry Ugunna. Good morning. Does your toothpaste give you complete fresh protection? New Close-Up Toothpaste Complete Fresh Protection takes care of your five important oral care needs. It gives you strong teeth, prevents tooth holes, cleans deeply, fights bacteria, and gives you fresh breath. Complete fresh protection from Close-Up. This is ABS, Heartbeat of the East.